We're about to take our most ambitious trip to date, from Summer Leighton, crossing Braden Water and mooring overnight at Yarmouth Yacht Station. Next day we'll be on to Cockshoot Public Mooring for another overnight stay before our final leg to Coltishall. Well good morning, we're on our way to Cockshoot, our next public mooring. We didn't film any of the first part of the journey, crossing Braden Water and Yarmouth take a good deal of concentration and planning and we wanted to get that right, especially as we're still amateurs. There's a lot written about crossing Braden Water and how you time your arrival at Yarmouth to ensure you will fit under the bridges. There is a defined channel across Braden venture outside of more than likely run aground on one of the numerous mud banks. We didn't intend doing that. The advice from the Broads Authority is to hit Yarmouth at slack water. If you get there at low tide you will still fit under the bridges and we know that because we did but we'll be fighting the tide through the very narrow constrictions under those bridges. Our boat had a 1600 diesel engine had more than enough power to overcome the tidal flow. Some boats apparently are not so lucky. We weren't one of them. Well, we've made it safely to Cockshoot. Got a nice mooring, but no sign of Mel. Ah, might have guessed. I'm not sure if these two are in competition or the herons just taken all the hard work out of fishing. Either way he hasn't been lucky with Mel so far although she has caught one. Closest I've ever got to a heron you can walk right by him and he will not move. So you'll make the heron round here again. There he is. There he is. Now what are you going to do with him? <laughs> I don't think he wants to play with you. I don't think he wants to play with you. And I don't think he trusts you either. Of course, one of the things about the broads is their tidal even this far inland and this we're literally just at high tide now fast approaching slack tide and you can see this boardwalk is literally just above the water 
Certainly Alfie's not too sure about it because it wasn't there when we did it at 7 o'clock this morning. <laughs> oh yeah. No, you're not getting in the mud. So here we are in the beautiful village of Coltishall, an uneventful journey apart from the uh, river works or road works, never thought we'd get caught in a traffic jam in the broads, but I hadn't even turned the engine off before, guess where Mel was? Well, I have to say this is the perfect end to a perfect day. We woke up this morning from our mooring and a nice gentle cruise through Wroxham. Managed to get the boat fueled up, managed to get the water topped up, managed to get the sewage tank pumped out. So all in all, it's been a very good day. And now I'm sitting up here looking over the river at Coltishall and Mel is trying a battle of wits with the carp not the carp, the perch that she can see Alf has had the time of life in this park it's um, absolutely stunning and then just down there Two pubs, both serve breakfast, both are dog friendly. So all in all, perfect end to a perfect late summer's day. The weather's been gorgeous. It's going to be like this again tomorrow. So, I'll let you enjoy the views, see if Mel catches a fish, all the people off to the pub. It's a perfect piece of England really.
Morning folks, Alfie's decided it's seven o'clock, time to get up, so now we go for a walk. This has become a routine of this with these few weeks, but he's loving it. But today, I've got to show you, this is what we got up to. How gorgeous is that? Sun's just beginning to come through the trees. Yeah, well worth waking up to. Just the tiniest bit of mist about. Water absolutely dead calm. But that's more to do with the tide. I think it's at low tide now. So when we leave later on, We'll be going into the tide, which is good, and help us go under rocks and bridge. Even at a full tide, our clearance is enough to get under. It's seven o'clock in the morning, and the river's already coming alive. Paddleboarding seems to be a common thing now. I've seen lots of people doing it, as is canoeing. Fishing, this is a big fishing area, with all the wildlife around, all the pelic uh, pelicans, with the herons, the geese, everything else like that, lovely to see, but by Christ do they make a mess of the boat, and you'll see this repeated all over the broads every morning, when the boat's very wet, and all the animal bird shit is really soft it's a lot easier to clean off of course the one good thing about being on the river is there's plenty of water this is what we're doing now so we get all this crap off especially as we're taking the boat back in a couple of days so some of you may be wondering why i'm wearing a life jacket it's very simple it keeps you alive if you end up in the water. Now, before you all say, yeah, I'm a good swimmer and everything like that, those of you that know me will know I spent a long time in the fire service. And part of that was doing a lot of water rescues. I can't remember how many people I've assisted getting out of the river who were dead, but good swimmers. Obviously not good enough. The river will take no prisoners. No water will take prisoners. So for the sake of putting this life jacket on, it's an insurance policy. You stand a much better chance of coming out alive. i tell you what, it's certainly easier than washing a car. Alf is of the opinion he's awake, so so should everybody else be. to show the panel to clean off. That's it. Job done. It's easy as that. That's it. Time for a cup of tea. Breakfast stop, time for Mel to cook, where Reggie and I go exploring. Alfie really is the best dog to explore with. Well, there's obviously a reason for the name. I'd love to find out what it was. And this fella doesn't seem to be very amused with us being here anyway, but there you go, all part of country life. But what a lovely view from up here, in what most people regard, and I certainly used to, as a flat county. But as you can see, it's anything but.
this meadow is gorgeous again a shaky video because Alfie just wants to get going and we'll see if we can smooth it down a bit Your mum's going to be impressed with me, you're going to be soaked. Come on in. Elfie, come on in. Elfie found every dust hole going and made the most of it. He's absolutely black. I am going to be in so much trouble. Roxham's coming up, and as we go under this bridge, you'll see one of the uh, Norwich to Yarmouth trains. I think it's Norwich to Yarmouth anyway. Special trains with a central power unit. Um, I suppose they're electric, but provide their own power. I don't know. Perhaps someone will enlighten us. The biggest spectator sport in Wroxham is who's going to hit the bridge. And that's what everybody sits in the restaurants for, sits in the shop, sits on the quayside, pretending they're doing anything but watching the boats, hoping like hell they're going to hit the bridge. Well, were we going to hit the bridge? Mel was piloting. It was a lovely day. We were against the tide. The wind for once was kind. So we'll just have to see what happens. Acol Bridge, our last stop over before the long haul back to Yarmouth, one night stop over there and then back to Summer Leighton.
Our return journey across Braden Water was a lot smoother than our outward journey. On our outward journey we were into the wind, the tide was going out, we had quite a large swell. Mel said she noticed it far more when she went in the cabin rather than on the bridge. However, on the way back as you can see, a much smoother journey. We were a bit troubled at time by the rain because we don't have windscreen wipers. Thank God for rain -X. Other than that, it was quite a straightforward journey as long as you stay between the green and red poles. One idiot coming the other way decided he wanted to be on our side and pushed us and another boat that had gone by earlier very close to the green poles indeed. This unusual looking building is a house now. Before that it was the waiting room and signal box for the railway line that crossed the river at this point, again on a swing bridge, but was later replaced by the one down at Summer Layton. Now I understand as well that it was a bit of a shunting yard or marshalling yard, but that's about as much as I know. If I can find out more I may well do a follow up episode.
We love this little boat so much that we bought it. Thanks for watching. If you like what you see, please hit the like button. If you want to subscribe, that would be great too. Until the next time, stay safe. See you again.